Epic is back. Fantastic sounding golf club. Okay, everybody, so welcome back to the channel. Got another brand new review, and this is a really exciting one. As always, Callaway are really big on their launches, and this is no exception. So we're now seeing a new range of drivers in the way of Epic. So Epic is back, as I've just sort of said. We saw Epic, original, Epic Flash. Maverick came into the range last year, and we've gone back to the name Epic, which is quite interesting. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. We've got three different drivers, maybe suiting three different types of golfers. We're gonna test every single one of these in this particular video, so do stay in tuned. We've got Trapman on the floor, as always, so we're gonna provide you with some numbers. Obviously, my personal feedback of the looks, the feel, and the performance of these new drivers. Okay, so new Epic lineup. There's three drivers. So we've got Epic Speed, which they are classing as their fastest driver, maximizing ball speed and forgiveness for those golfers who are striving for those extra distance off the tee. We've then got an Epic Max, which we see is now the larger footprint, movability in the back of the head, and basically their most forgiving. So combine, combine a little bit of speed in there, but then really maximizing that MOI for ultimate forgiveness. And also their more draw bias driver of the three. And then what's for me is a really interesting one, and I'm a little bit confused by the name here, but we've now got Epic Max LS. So this replaces the Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero's been in the lineup for obviously a number of years. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that as well, but uh, we've now got Max LS, so Max Low Spin. Interesting, because we associate the word Max with the maximum forgiveness. A little bit more maybe that draw bias yet in the players club and the low spin we don't really associate those words with that type of club do we so again we'll have a little chat, chat about that okay so we're going to start off with the epic speed so this is replacing the standard ma maverick so what we saw is that what they call that cyclone back section so a very high crown then the sole sort of lifted up sharply to meet the crown uh, which was helping a little bit more with aerodynamics so they've taken that a little bit from the maverick there now and put it into the speed we have got no adjustability in terms of shifting of the weight. We've got a fixed weight screw at the back section. So again, trying to get that CG back and, and making it obviously the MOI as much uh, forgiving as they possibly can. Next sleeve wise, still got all the adjustability as we've seen, which I think is a fantastic next sleeve that Callaway offer, you know, changing loft up and down. And you've also then got draw um, by sections in there as well. Uh, big talking point now is the new jailbreak. So we saw jailbreak introduced in Callaway products in the original Epic four years ago now and they've developed a little bit more now so two basically jailbreak just to explain it quickly is two bars that run vertically behind the club face that connect the crown and the sole of the golf club so as a ball would strike energy is typically lost through the crown as it flexes and through the sole so they are stiffening that with these rods and then putting that energy back into the club face which ultimately is back into that golf ball They've now developed it along with artificial intelligence that we've obviously been using with flash face for, for a couple of um, models now, um, is now they've used that as it, to help them design this new, which they now call an AI speed frame. So you've still got two bars running, but then it's now attached in four sections at the bottom and also then four sections at the top. So it's creating that stiffness from the vertically, from the crown to the sole, as we've seen previously, but also now horizontally. So from that toe to the heel, the stiff in the body of the club in all directions again trying to help with that ball speed on that club face okay so let's get underway uh, unfortunately callaway have sent me 10 and a half head loft in this speed model so i have lofted this down through the next sleeve to 9.5 which is more to the loft that i would typically sort of play so as always the first thing we look at is impressions down by the golf ball and as soon as i got this out of the wrapper I, I don't know what you like in the golf shop, but I'm exactly the same. You put it down and you want to look at what it's like in that playing position. And I'll tell you what, this is beautiful. It's a stunning shape of head. We've got a, a gloss um, black finish on the top. Obviously, we can see a little bit of that carbon on that back um, half of the crown. We've just got Epic on that back section, just with a little bit of green and sort of silver, I think it is, silver or white, sort of 
edging on that back, which I think is quite classy. Obviously you've got the V logo, as we've always sort of seen, and it sits really quite square. I have lofted this down and that does sit, to my eyes, very, very square. So with it in its standard position, maybe just a fraction towed in, but nothing untoward. It's a very nice looking club sat down by that golf ball. Okay, and that is a fantastic sounding golf club. We, when I, I'm, I'm thinking back now to the original Epic when that launched and it was a very muted, it was that carbon sort of sound, very dull, muted sound. And it, it was a great sounding golf club. I think that's one of the biggest things I remember from the original Epic, it was a great sound. And that was very, very similar. And to be honest, I didn't really get all of that uh, on that strike, but that, uh, that got out there very nicely. Oh, that's a lovely strike. That is a very solid feeling golf club and whether that's that uh, speed frame jailbreak behind it so once just over 160 ball speed a little bit high on that spin number there but 276 through the air feel i love the sound of that that's the big thing that jumps out at me there the sound is very very solid and we know sound can obviously influence what, what, what we feel as golfers looks great behind the ball and it sounds great it's always a good start Okay, and that's testing a bit of forgiveness. That was a little bit in that heel, heel of the golf club. So that just starts a little bit up that left-hand side there, that heel strike. Oh, I struck that great. Again, just fraction up that left-hand side, but that's such a good ball flight. Absolutely love the sound of that. It feels unbelievably good off that club face. And again, wasn't the perfect of golf strikes, but it's a very straight golf shot. Okay, so there's five shots hit with the speed. Just a couple up that left-hand side, maybe just spoil that dispersion ring a little bit there. Very impressed with that, looks good, it sounds amazing. Let's jump into the max. Okay, so Epic Max. This is what Callaway are saying, they're combined in the ultimate and ball speed with the ultimate forgiveness. So a very straight hitting golf club is what Callaway are saying. And obviously what we're seeing there now is just that larger footprint. So just down into that plane position, longer from that face to that back section. It's just like it's elongated out, squashed out a little bit more. Uh, and we've now got adjustability in this back section. So we've got a 17 gram weight, which can obviously move from a central position into the toe and also into that heel. And what Callaway is saying is when you put it in that heel position, it, it's giving it the most draw bias that they've seen in mo ma many of their actual drivers over the years. So interesting for maybe you sort of faders or slices out there, that could possibly be a good potential of trying to straighten your golf shots up. So down by that golf ball for a more forgiving driver, a more more um, draw bias driver in a way, it sits incredibly square. This is now a nine degree head and I've got that set just as a nine degree. So I've not done anything through that neck sleeve and that just, it sits great, it, it really does. Yes, it's a little bit larger in that back section. It fills you with a bit of confidence possibly. It's obviously there for a reason to pull that CG as low and back as they possibly can, which increases MOI and forgiveness. Oh, and that's lovely. That feels very good again. Sound again, I think just a fraction louder than the speed there, I'm probably gonna say, but that felt really good. Definitely looked to be flying a little bit higher on the actual ball flight. First impressions. Now they've just changed the crown section. So obviously we've got carbon in the top. We've seen that for many models now, but when the carbon meets the titanium of the actual club face, the meeting point there now is a lot closer to that top uh, edge of the club face. So with that being the highest part of the crown, if they can save that weight there and obviously replace it with carbon, then that weight can obviously go distributing deeper into the club. Again, it's lowering that CG of the golf club and making it more sort of repositioned more down. So they're actually saving now 19 grams of weight in that extra carbon on the top. And obviously that's getting redistributed elsewhere in the club, club head to create that stability. And probably most of it is going into that back uh, weight, isn't it, into that uh, 17 gram weight at the back. Oh, that feels amazing. Definitely just a little bit of a higher ball flight, but really good. Yeah, 285, that was, that was my longest one there. That was, felt really good, very stable. What's also quite clever, I think, what Callaway are doing on all these models is this white uh, section in the toe on the sole is actually carbon. So they've just took a piece of that, 
titanium base or part of the sole, replaced it with carbon. We know that saves weight and they redistributed that more into the heel part of the gulp. So each of these golf clubs have that little bit of draw bias in, in the actual uh, club itself, just with that changing of that material in that toe section. Yeah, not a bad one again, not perfect, but done very, very well. Seems to be pretty consistent on that ball speed. Just on those slight different strikes. So I think really this sort of club, as I say, is a more, maybe more that sort of mid to high handicap, I would say, who's trying to get as much ball speed out there, trying to get the strides as straight as they can. Potentially those types of golfers would typically uh, have more of a fade or slice in, in the game. So with that draw bias movable of that 17 gram weight into that heel can maybe help with those shots. Having said that, I'm really enjoying hitting this. I think I could probably game that myself if I sort of just dial that in a little bit more spins, maybe just a little bit on that high side, you know, maybe that weight back, maybe it's the only problem there, but the looks and the feel, yes, it's a more of a, a, a bigger head than I'm sort of used to, but it does fill you with a lot of confidence. It does feel very stable. Oh, that's a great strike, but again, just up that left-hand side a little bit, struck that really well. Felt like it did. Very consistent on that ball speed. Okay, so let's hit one more with the Max and we'll move into the Max LS, the low spin driver. Oh, that's beautiful. That's probably the best one. Lovely ball flight on that. A bit more neutral. Yeah, and obviously a few more yards there. Okay, let's move into the LS, the low spin. Right, okay, so moving into the Max LS. This is the one that's quite interesting for me and what the Callaway have changed from previous models. So ultimately, this is replacing the Sub-Zero. So Sub-Zero is obviously very renowned as that ultra low spin. And I always class the Sub-Zero as a bit of a fiery animal. <laughs> you know, you had to hit that club with a bit of speed and out of the middle of the golf club. Out of that, it used to just, sometimes just, if you missed it in the bit toe, it just nosedived. It was very, very low spin. And Callaway are now saying that a lot of the tour players, and this is where the, this, this technology and the way they've designed this driver is a lot through tour feedback that they're getting out there is regards to a lot of the tour players now aren't striving for that ultra low spin. Callaway is saying their, their Callaway guys are typically looking around that 26 to 2800 spin number, which is surprising those sort of players at those sort of speeds, you think they'll be in that 2000, maybe 1800 sort of area in that, uh, that spin, but they're looking at obviously creating accuracy. They obviously generate a lot of speed now, as you see through more modern players, speed is a big thing, a big subject to talk about. Uh, but also hitting fairways is, is equally as important for those guys because it makes that next shot so much easier, doesn't it? So a little bit more spin, maybe a little bit more accurate. So it's not ultra low spin, but obviously it is more low spin, Callaway saying, in relation to the speed and the max. We've got the adjustability of the weight in the back, but now this is 13 grams, not 17. So obviously saving a bit of weight, the, I'm guessing the rest of that weight is going to go more down and forward to try and get into that slightly more low spin bracket. We've still got the AI flash face, we've still got the AI speed frame and the jailbreak we were talking about there. So the technology is the same in the head, but a little bit more of a, a neater looking head. It, again, it's stunning. Beautiful shape, black gloss, got carbon on the back and it just sits extremely square into that plane position. So again, nine degree, set as a nine degree in the next leaf. Yeah, okay, so that was again, just a fraction of that heel. It's flown quite nicely. Nice straight, that hit the fairway. Ball speed there is good. Spins a little bit high, really through that strike. And I could feel that just a little bit sort of more of a twist in the head when I missed that. So definitely the forgiveness level isn't quite as much as you're obviously gonna see in the max. But what Callaway are saying with this is it's much more forgiving than the Sub-Zero version. And I'd probably agree, because the Sub-Zero I thought was very unforgiving. As I mentioned, you had to really hit the middle of the golf club, otherwise there's a lot of gear effect, um, dropping a spin on there. So it was, it was a tough club to hit. That's a nice strike. And again, it's a great sounding golf club. You know, it's, it's just a very solid feel. I think you can feel that sort of frame behind it, just creating like a firm, solid hit off that club face. Yeah, a little bit of that left hand side. Again, it's not a perfect strike. Touch heel starts up that left. And you can definitely just feel more of that twist in that club head. 
So I'd definitely say it's not forgiving as much forgiving as the Max as we just mentioned before, which you typically gonna expect. Oh, that's a great hit. That's a very solid hit. Beautiful flight, very forward looking flight on that. So we see that ball speed just really hover from all of those clubs just around that 161 mark, aren't we? Couple of slight little miss hits just drops maybe around that just 159, 160 mark, but very consistent on that on that flight. And again, that's lovely. Really, really enjoyed hitting all three of those, to be honest. I think the looks are great. Yes, very different, uh, or subtly different, should I say, from each of those models, but the sound is absolutely on the money for me personally. That Again, this is my preference. This is my uh, personal feedback. You know, you might not like the sound of that, and that's why I'd always urge you guys to go out and try these yourself and test them. Do they work for you? Do you like the feel of it? Do you like the look of it? Not every, everybody does, do they? But I think that's a great looking club, great sounding club. But let's go and look at some numbers a little bit more deeper between those three drivers. Okay, so let's have a look at the dispersion rings to start off with between those three. So we can see the white one was the speed, yellow was the max, and the max LS was the purple. So we can see probably the better results there was actually with the max and probably a driver that I wouldn't maybe put straight into my hands. I would probably be, first of all, instincts of looks, I'm jumping straight to that Max LS just because I like that little bit more compact uh, head sort of shape uh, that we're sort of seeing down by that golf ball. But then when I look at the results and what I felt with that Max was it did feel really forgiving. It just felt very, very easy to hit. And I got my longer shots with that and also the probably a slightly tighter dispersion as well. Okay, so then when we look into the numbers themselves, we can see club head speed, obviously very similar between all of those there. Maybe the Max just a touch slower as one that was a little bit slow maybe there, uh, but very much in that similar sort of bracket as you'd expect. We've got ball speed, uh, 160.9, 161.5 with the max. So that gave me a little bit of that higher ball speed and 160.8 with the LS. So very, very similar area with, the, with max just edging it a tiny bit on that ball speed. So your launch angle, again, very similar area. Just prefer to see that in that 10 area personally. You know, when I get a little bit low, a couple of slight heel strikes, which to be fair, I had with a few of them, you can see it drops off those launch a little bit, doesn't it? Uh, spin number 3158. So a little bit spinnier with the speed for me, but then the max was 2840, which was a nice sort of number. And then two and a half, that little bit low spin, as you're going to expect with that LS version of head. So 276 carry, 280, 273. So looking in terms of ball speed, bit, bit of distance and real the spin, you know, for me, the max, believe it or not, is actually just winning on that particular test. Okay, so there we go, epic. We're back into the word epic. We've gone from Maverick back into the epic. And I think really with, I've probably seen how, why they've maybe gone into the name of epic now. You know, we saw the introduction of jailbreak four year, years ago in the original epic. We brought jailbreak in, it was called Epic. They've now redesigned this jailbreak and it's a little bit different from that previous one. So now it makes sense. They've gone back to that word Epic again, haven't they? Okay, so interesting. Love to hear your thoughts as always between those three models. Interesting to see that the Max has actually given me the, in that particular test, slightly better results. Post comments down below. Lots more videos coming your way. We've got the fairways to look at. We've got some new hybrid and the Apex and some new beautiful looking irons from Callaway as well. So all those videos will come in onto my channel as soon as possible. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have shared the video around, make sure you've hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and hopefully we'll catch up with you all very soon.